Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Welcome back to my channel. Whenever I meet new people, most of the time, and I mean like 80% of the time, it will go something like this. Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. So what do you do, Maggie? Oh, I'm an astrophysicist. That is so cool. I'm a Virgo. So what can you tell me about myself? Okay, okay, fair enough that this comes from the general public, but the other day in the office, I was asked by a fellow colleague, yes, a real physicist. What's your star sign, Maggie? I'm a Pisces. Oh, I'm a Sagittarius, fire and water are not a match. So this week, I want to talk about astrology from an astronomer's point of view. Is there more to it? Or is it completely bogus? Does Mercury being in retrograde really mean that I have a rough week ahead? All very interesting questions indeed, so let's just begin. The definition of astrology is the study of the movements and relative positions of celestial bodies interpreted as having an influence on human affairs and the natural world. The first evidence of astrology dates back to 3000 BC, but up until the 17th century, astrology was seen as a respectable scholarly study. It was closely tied with astronomy and even Galileo was practicing astrologer. It's unlikely that today you'll meet an astronomer who also believes in astrology, but that doesn't mean its usage has faded out of popularity. Astrology has been used by ancient civilizations worldwide. Modern day Western astrology is based on your birth month and Chinese astrology is based upon your birth year. They both share the similarity of interpreting meaning out of astronomical events. The idea that a blood moon could mean that everything is being thrown into chaos or a total eclipse is related to bad omens seems kind of ridiculous, but are still things that people take seriously today. It's estimated that Americans spend on average $2 billion a year on mystical services. A third of science students are believed to be subscribed to some kind of astrology, and even I myself have accompanied friends on these bizarre meetings. The best way to test if astrology is real is to study the lives of twins, as twins are born within minutes of each other. According to astrology, they should have essentially the same traits. But researchers followed the lives of a thousand pairs of twins over several decades. They looked at over a hundred different characteristics, things like jobs, anxiety levels, relationship status, financials, IQ levels, and failed to find any evidence of similarity. But does that mean that astrology is completely rubbish? Well, not quite. We know that the forces of gravity and electromagnetism play a fundamental role in human behavior and cognition and on living organisms in general. In the absence of gravity, humans are known to suffer difficulties in decision making, and many animals use Earth's gravity to orient themselves. For example, if you were to put a fish in a tank without any light or direction, it wouldn't affect the way that it swims. Other animals are known to sense Earth's magnetic field, bees are known to use Earth's magnetic field for navigation, and even bacteria are able to align themselves with Earth's magnetic field lines. Ants, when subjected to stronger magnetic fields, are known to not travel so far for foraging food. So despite these forces being so minuscule, they still have an effect on our behavior. Whilst it's often assumed that Earth's gravity is constant, it actually changes with the seasons due to the mass of water moving around Earth's surface. This, of course, is related to our orbiting of the moon. The gravitational influence of other planets on Earth will also change as they traverse across the solar system. The Earth's magnetic field will vary with the activity of the Sun. Solar storms will weaken Earth's magnetic field, and we know that the solar activity follows a cycle that runs between 9 and 14 years long. This could be consistent with the 12-year horoscopes of Chinese astrology. But that being said, the effects of these forces are tiny, and their changes are tiny too. More importantly, environmental factors are likely to affect human behavior. It's well known that summer children are more likely to struggle in school and fall into lower ability groups. Winter-born children have been observed to be more likely to be born 
from less privileged families. One of the assumptions of this result is that less privileged families are less likely to have air conditioning, which means they're less likely to engage in those kind of activities during summer months. There are many other differences that have been observed for children born at different times of the year. For all of these reasons, I personally, even as an astronomer, would not completely rule out astrology. It's completely possible that the effects of the seasons, the planets, and the solar system could have an effect on human behavior. Despite the twin study showing us otherwise, I would argue that these effects would be minuscule, that it would be really hard to measure, and a study of 2,000 twins is just not big enough to see those tiny differences. If instead you ask me if I believe in the horoscopes that you read online, then my answer would be an outright no. I don't believe in mystics. I don't believe they have the competency to read our lives, let alone our futures. Perhaps one reason that astrology is so popular is their vagueness. So people tend to focus on parts that are very accurate and reinforce their own beliefs in them. Anyway, that's just my opinion. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this week's video. And if you liked it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.